yes, let's stand up for Hinduism, let's make it happen and show the depth and how Hinduism can contribute to the state of humanity today. So I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Next video about this continuous series about cults, brainwashing, anti-Hindu elements and thought currents. Uh, in this video, in this video, in this video, faulty attribution, I've heard that, and the relationship with Guru. Uh, so the first thing was faulty attribution. I, I heard this concept where people are saying it's faulty attribution, something is happening. You attribute it to Guru, the Guru's grace or Guru's blessing, but actually it is not because of that, it is because of your hard work. And you should... Uh, you should feel good about yourself that you've done hard work and you've gained some results. So, what I, what I understand and what, I re what I'm kind of cognizing and realizing as I'm living this lifestyle, we, there's an effort from our part. There's no question about it. There's, in Hinduism, it's all about tapas, it's all about doing service, doing, so there's always an effort. But, and when we say that it is Guru's grace or the blessings of Shiva, Shiva's, Shiva's blessings or uh, Shiva's grace, we are, not, we are not forgetting that we didn't do anything. We are just grateful that the effort that we have infused, the life, I shouldn't say effort, the lifetime and energy that we have infused in a certain kind of service or a certain practice or a spiritual um, action, has given the fruits. So when, see, there's many people who do meditation, but they don't have glimpse of, of the experience of consciousness. Some people do meditation, they have glimpse of consciousness. There's many people who are, uh, who are wanting to manifest something in their life, but they don't. And other people who want to manifest the same thing and they do, why? So it is not that we don't take in consideration the amount of work and the lifetime and energy, I, lifetime and energy that we infuse into something is that we are grateful that oh yes the lifetime and energy that i have infused into that has given fruits has given results and i'm surrendering these results to the master or to uh, to shiva um to the ultimate because again so that we don't become attached to uh, the result because if we are too attached to the result then when we don't have result we become agitated restless depressed and all that, we go through mood swings, and then we lose the space of serenity, of Paramashivam, of powerfulness. And if we, um, so yeah, so basically when we say that it is because of Guru's grace or Shiva's blessings, um, it is saying that I have put some effort and he has heard me and he has, he has given. Many people have put this, many people put efforts into many things, but they don't get the results. Why? If we look in, if we have seeking and we look into our inner space, definitely we will realize that the context, the thought currents we cherish are not, uh, they're not aligned and that is why we are not manifesting. But initially we don't realize. But that's why we need to be initiated into this powerful truth, this powerful cognition. And we have to start to look into them. We have to meditate, contemplate, manana. Hinduism is all about shravana, manana, nididhyasana. Man, uh, shravana means listening. Swamiji was saying, in the Gurukul back then, if a kid was having a hard time to repeat the mantras, so the Acharya would repeat the mantra and the Gurukul students would have to repeat the, the, repeat the mantra twice or whatever line of the sloka. And if one student was having a hard time and he was not able to listen, because if you're not able to reproduce, that's because you're not listening. So if they're not able to reproduce, they know that he has a problem in listening. Somehow he's not listening. Why? Some blind spot is there. The child is not listening. Awareness is not there. He said sometimes they put the child next to a river and he would not be allowed to come back to class until he's able to mimic the sound of the river. He has to listen to the sound, internalize it and reproduce it. So it starts with Shravana, listening. Then Manana, that Manana is what I'm referring to here. The contemplation, internalizing, analyzing inside, in your inner space, a kind of chewing, a spiritual truth to allow maturity to happen, to allow more depth to be revealed uh, about that spiritual truth. And then Nididhyasana, which means radiating, sharing, giving, living. 
and um, and that is why so when we are not manifesting what we want it is because uh, our inner space is not right and then that's where we have to you know have seeking and look into our inner space and start to identify the cognitions and align reintegrate the inner space and once a certain amount of integrity is manifested once integrity is manifested then naturally what we want becomes a reality so it is not about not taking in consideration that you haven't worked i mean us doing the service or us doing the tapas that's that's a given yes we are putting lifetime and energy into that and that is very normal when we say oh it's because of guru's grace that doesn't mean that we're saying oh no i haven't done anything no well, we have done and we are happy that it is manifesting and like that, not only we get uh, complete about the manifestation, we are not attached to the result because like I said, when you're attached to the result, you lose the space of manifestation. And then after that, you're not, no longer able to manifest and then you go through this powerless cycle again. And, uh, and, and yeah, so that's one thing. It's faulty attribution is, <laughs> I will not say what it is, but you know what it is. It is anti-Hindu concept. Um, so yes, so this is discarded. This doesn't make sense and it's not real and it's not in our favor. If you believe that, you are not going to be empowered by that. You will not learn how to take power over your life. You will not realize how everything that is happening in your life, you have decided for it. I know this is pretty shocking. It is. I mean, spiritual truth, most of the time they are pretty shocking. Um, it is truth. And the more we contemplate on it, the more we realize how it is true. And we, uh, then we align to it and we learn how to manifest more and more. Second thing, what was the second thing? Faulty attribution. Yes, Guru. <laughs> Unfortunately, in the West, we feel, no, I wouldn't say that. We do not understand, so let's forget cognizing, we do not understand and cognize the principle of oneness. We simply don't. The culture is not established on that, which is very sad, and that is why so much suffering is happening. Luckily, Hinduism is established into that, and that is why Hinduism is ultimate and amazing. Now, when you do not understand oneness, you only understand duality. When you only understand duality, when you are in that delusion of duality, of dvandva, you can only cognize conflicts. You can only cognize conquered and conqueror. So the problem is that a lot of anti-Hindu forces, they use the thought current that, oh, you surrender to your guru, you're worshiping to your guru, you're, you're losing yourself to some other man, you're giving all your power to that person, and uh, they go in that line, you know, basically you become a slave to another human. And some people, they will say, I've seen so many comments, they say, oh, he's, that's guru is just, they're referring to my guru, for instance, Swamiji. Uh, and he's saying he's just a man why you're following a man and uh, there's all this crap guru is not a person if you feel that the person you're following and claiming as your guru or if you don't have guru then you don't have guru that's, that's, also, that's also very clear but if you do if you feel you have a guru and you feel that it is a man that you're following. As far as I understand and what I'm cognizing, you don't have a guru. You are following somebody. Guru is not a person. Guru is a principle. I am following Swamiji because I have decided to cherish the Guru Tattwa, the principle of Guru Tattwa through Swamiji. So for me, Swamiji is not a man. He is the embodiment of the Guru Tattwa. That is why I decided to surrender and become disciple. So it's a totally different relationship. The West or anti-Hindu forces, they don't understand that relationship. They just don't get it because they're stuck in duality. They don't realize that the Guru is nothing but the reflection of your inner space, of your soul. And by aligning to the Guru, 
No, I should say the your pure inner space, not your full of traffic inner space. When you align to the Guru, you are aligning to yourself. The Guru is the projection of yourself. Surrendering to the Guru means surrendering to yourself, but because you do not know yourself, you forgot who you truly are, you need to have some kind of model. Because we are so deluded, we need some kind of model that our mind can kind of start to grasp and use that as a, as a, as a motivation to go into that experience of the self. Swamiji was saying, he was sharing how Arunagiri Yogeshwara gave him this understanding, or I should say this powerful cognition, where he was saying, you do not know God until you realize God. So even if you feel like, oh, I am in oneness with Paramashiva, your understanding of Paramashiva is not exactly what Paramashiva is, because your delusion is also part of your understanding of Paramashiva. That delusion has to be discarded. And that is why Guru is important. You need to follow an enlightened person, an enlightened master. And if you're lucky, an avatar. Because that person knows, he has realized, and he is fully established in that space. And by following that person who is established in that space, then you will start to reconnect with that space which is inside of you. So it is not about following someone. If you feel you, uh, your guru is someone that you're following, then you do not have guru. You have somebody that you're following. And these people are, these anti-Hindu forces are using these principles, these understandings, these concepts to disconnect you from guru, to make sure that you never even grasp the guru-disciple relationship, rela uh, relationship, which is the worst thing. Because if you don't cognize the, the guru-disciple relationship, you will, you will be stuck in duality. You will never be able to experience oneness. When you start to experience oneness with your guru, you will start to experience oneness with everything around you. But you need an anchor point to start with. When we start, when we want to come back to that space of oneness, we need to align to something. Otherwise, there's so many things. It's too, too chaotic and our inner space is too messy in order to align. So it's easy. You have a guru and you integrate it to your guru. And by reintegrating yourself more and more to your guru, you integrate yourself. You realize yourself. And like that, you enter into oneness and you enter into oneness and everything becomes wonderful. So that's what I want to share in this video. Faulty attribution is a myth. It is not real. It is a concept anti-Hindu forces brings forward for you to stop looking into your inner space and to look and to stop trying to connect with the unknown dimension of you to Paramashiva, to the Guru Tattwa, to the Guru. And Guru is not a person outside of you. Guru is not something outside of you. It is not. It's a totally different kind of relationship. If you grasp it, you are blessed. If you don't, seek for it. And the more you seek, the more you get it. And Hindus have it, whether now because of whatever education has been happening for the last two, three hundred years, they might have lost a lot, but the Hindu DNA has it because the whole tradition, that's, that's, the, that's the whole culture, that's the whole tradition. Of course, it has been destroyed a lot, and that is why now we have to stand and fight for it and reestablish it. But it is there. So, yes. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in another episode. I have more content by anti-Hindu concepts that needs to be dismantled and put in the garbage and sent to the... Yes! So with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe, like, comment, and uh, shave! Nidhyanam. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. <laughs>